With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Oh, Silver! Hawk was the name by which a certain clever leader of an outlaw gang had become known throughout the Far West Territory. He had received the name when a group of men wearing black dominoes suddenly appeared among a large group of guests at a masked ball, which was being given by a mine owner in Albuquerque to celebrate the completion of a home he had built there. Instead of the usual black mask worn by the other domino men, the leader wore a mask which completely covered his face and which oddly resembled a hawk. They had appeared with startling suddenness in the midst of the merrymakers. All right, line up, everybody. This is a hold-up. Hold We're holding guns. The boss here beside me gave orders to shoot down the first one who tried any tricks. All right, men. The boss says for three of us to take one side of the room and three of the other. You stand here in the center with his guns ready. Right. Muley, you and Hody come with me. Yeah. Let's get busy. Right. While the silent leader had watched with drawn guns, the others quickly robbed the guests. Then the gang departed as suddenly as they had appeared. Later, the infuriated host was giving details to the sheriff. My thunder, sheriff, was the most brazen thing I ever saw. And they got away with plenty, too. Did you notice anything about him? Can you give me some kind of a, descri a description? Look, as you know, I was given a mask ball. All of the outlaws wore long black robes and had on black half masks. The leader had one on, too, but he wore a different mask. A different? Yeah, a painted mask. It covered his whole face. It reminded me of a hawk, sort of. What's more, he let one of the others do the talking. He never spoke a word. Oh, I see. Well, I ordered my deputy to get a posse together. They must be ready to ride now. So I get over there right away to go with him. Well, I hope you catch that hawk fellow. No telling how he and his gang of his will go if you don't. Well, we'll do our best to trail him. You can bet on that. And so the leader of that gang had become known as the hawk as they moved unhindered from New Mexico territory southward into Texas, robbing and killing as they went. <laughs> A year after the masked ball episode, Frank Carrick, a smooth-looking middle-aged man with athletic build, bought a large ranch outside of Pecos, the Bar W spread. Carrick kept pretty much to himself, but his wealth gave him a certain amount of influence in civic affairs in town. After the Pecos bank had been robbed, it was Carrick's voice that was heard most when the citizens held a meeting of indignation. I say the 
the sheriff don't try hard enough. That's yeah, right. he lost the trail and gave up. We ought to get a new sheriff, that's what. Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. As you all know, the cashier and the bank teller both agree it was the Hawk and his gang who pulled the bank over. Yeah. The Hawk has the reputation for being clever. And he's outwitted lawmen for over a year. I say it's only fair we consider that. Let the present sheriff continue in office. I lost plenty of that robbery. But I believe the sheriff did as well as anyone else could have against the hawk. I just tell him to raise the The hawk is mighty clever. I agree with Carrick. Let the sheriff stay. Since I was made head of the Cattlemen's Association for this territory, I have to make frequent trips out of town. If anything more happens, notify my foreman, Tex. He'll get in touch with me. He'll put my men at the sheriff's disposal to ride in a posse. Well, it's sure good for this town. Yeah, we're lucky to have him living near. It was three weeks later when the Padre at the mission, not far from Fort Leeton, walked out into the patio one morning in time to see a young trooper stagger to the open gateway and fall with a groan. Oh. Hurriedly, the Padre went to him and, kneeling beside him, saw that he was wounded. Wounded oh, trooper. Come, amigo. I'll help you inside. I'm hurt bad. Oh. Come. Do not try to talk yet. Oh. Easy. Come, easy. Rest on this couch, my son. Thanks. Oh. I must doctor your wounds. Then you can tell no. me. Oh, please. I, I must talk. Easy, my boy. Easy. Easy. The, the pay wagon. We were coming from town. Held up in the pads. The others are dead. I, I managed to get this far. You need immediate attention, amigo. Wait until I... No. Oh. Nothing you can do for me. Get word to the fort. It was the Hawks gang. Tell the colonel I... <coughs> He has gone. Peace be with you, my son. I shall see that your last wish is carried out. Many miles away, the Lone Ranger and Toto had seen and understood the puffs of smoke from Indian signal fires as they rode along the trail. They had immediately set out for the mission and arrived that afternoon. The pottery explained about the trooper. I knew you'd want to know. I sent an Indian to the fort. They came at noon to take away the dead trooper. The colonel and some of the troopers are already out hunting a hawk. The hawk is a very clever outlaw, Padre. Many have tried to trail him for a long time. They've never caught up with him. Uh, him plenty bad color. Oh, horsemen are coming. I'll go to the gate and see who they are. I see them now. Troopers. You might as well give up the both of you. Wait. If they make no move to draw, there'll be no gunplay here inside the mission walls, Padre. But these outlaws can't claim protection here. You've made a mistake. They're not outlaws, Colonel. Colonel, you have my word of honor that these are friends. I sent for them after I learned about the massacre of your men in the past. They have come to help capture the Hawk and his vicious followers. Padre, I don't know your reason for trying to protect these men. I wouldn't for a minute say that you aren't telling the truth. Yet this doesn't make sense. The Padre has spoken the truth, Colonel. Uh, perhaps this may mean something to you. Hmm. Bullet. That is a bullet of silver, Colonel. The Commandant who was at the fort before you would readily know its meaning. Hey. Now that I think of it, Colonel Davis did mention a masked man who... That white stallion, the mask. Yes. Yes, now I do know. Take the men outside the gate, Sergeant. Tell the others we've made a mistake. Yes, sir. I owe you all an apology. I'm very sorry that this happened. Forget it, Colonel. We were trying to trail the gang led by the Hawk. One of my men saw you heading here, and he told us. We came here thinking perhaps the gang had broken up in order to escape. You lost the trail so soon. I'm ashamed to say that we did, sir. But we won't give up the search until the Hawk is captured. If you care to join us... Otto and I shall work alone, Colonel. If we come across a definite trail, we'll get word to you. That's a good idea. Others are hunting the hawk in this vicinity, too. He and his gang rustled cattle from a nearby ranch during the night. The marshal's posse has been joined by many of the ranchers. They were aroused by a man named Carrick, who is head of the Cattlemen's Association. He was in town for meeting when he heard of the rustling. Oh, I see. It seems the hawk and his gang are going to find escape more difficult than usual this time. 
Up to now, he hasn't bothered the army. And he never will again, if I can help it. Well, I'll join my men and get underway. Good luck, sir. And remember, if you get a line on them first, get in touch with them. I shall, Colonel. Adios. 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 After the troopers had left, the Lone Ranger and Tom Silver and Scout and headed for the pass where the holdup had taken place. There were enough signs to tell them when they had reached the spot where the army wagon had been stopped. They ranged to a halt. Oh, 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 Many others have been here, Tonto, but the trail is completely covered. Ah, it looked like troopers ride that way. It means maybe them follow outlaw trail then. Yes, we go that way too. Till we reach the place where the colonel and the troopers gave up. Maybe we can go on from there. All right, let's get going. Mm-hmm. For some distance, the masked man and his Indian companion followed the definite trail left by the troopers as they hunted the outlaw gang. Finally, the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the point of the Rio Grande where the troopers had come to a halt. Oh, no, the shallowness of the river at this point would allow the gang to cross easily, Toto. That's right, Kimasabi. You think maybe Colonel and troopers not cross to look for tracks on the other side? The United States Army men are forced to stop at the border, Toto. So in a case like this, I'm sure they crossed and searched the other shore and found nothing. Now, why you think that? Because the colonel said they lost the trail. But he didn't say that escaped over the border. Well, we search for tracks along the riverbank now. Yes. You go south, I'll go north. We'll meet in an hour at this point. All right, let's get going. It was more than an hour later when the Lone Ranger met Tonto at the place where the Hawk Gang's trail went into the river. The Lone Ranger had arrived there first. And when Tonto pulled to a stop, he found his master friend on foot, closely studying the riverbank. Oh, oh, Tonto, Tonto. Easy, Scott. Easy, Tonto. Find anything? No. No, he... He ride far down river. Not find any sign. Well, it was a thing in the other direction. Oh, what do you think outlaws do, Kimasabi? I'm beginning to get an idea, Tonto. To find out just how clever the hawk really is. What do you mean? Well, look here. Oh. Them hoof marks of horse that come from other side. That's right. This shallow place where many cross, Kimasabi. I know, but I've studied these hoof marks while I waited for you. Then I rode across to the other side. Ah, what you do then? Tonto, as you see, these hoof marks show that the horse making them has a broken shoe. Mm, that's right. It show plain and dirt. But there are no such marks leading into the river on the other side. Oh, no. We get ID now. Yes. The hawk and his men rode into the river, turned around, and rode right out again at the same place. Troopers were intent on following the trail into the river. And at the same time, they covered all the hoof marks as they rode down to the water here. Mm, that's plenty good trick to hop you. Stands to reason they turn off the trail a short way back so they wouldn't run into anyone following. We'll get the horses and see if we can find where they turned off. Ah, we follow Mark a horse with broken shoes. They've had a good start. Let's go. Very easy, but just not easy for that. <laughs> A short distance along the trail, the Lone Ranger slowed to a stop and pointed. Oh, look, oh, look, oh, 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 look there, Tonto. Ah. Marks a broken shoe turn left on branch trail with other hoof marks. Yes. That branch trail heads directly to town. Tonto, I feel that we're going to meet the hawk sooner than he expects. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto had little trouble following the Hawks gang along the branch trail. The marks of the broken shoes stood out plainly, and before long, the two men approached the town. It rained to a halt in a grove of cottonwoods, and Toto went into town alone. Within half an hour, Toto returned, and from the way he stopped and dismounted, the Lone Ranger sensed that the Indian brought disappointing news. Oh, scout, home, oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Something wrong, Toto? Kimasabi. Yes? Me thinks he make big mistake. Oh, what do you mean? When Mark's a horse with broken shoe, led to Marshall's house, Kimasabi. Me see horse standing out front. I see. What about the trail of the other horses? Well, them stop at cafe. There are many horses at hitch rack. Me not able to tell which ones we follow. Hmm. Does look as though we made a big mistake at that. Yet I'm sure those men didn't come from across the river at that spot. Well, maybe Marshall come back with posse after trailing rustlers. And maybe posse tra- trail rustlers to river someplace, then ride along in water, come out same place, outlaw start cross. That's a logical explanation. Yet I'd like to check on it somehow. Well, maybe if we go to Gafe, we find out if Marshall lead posse along in river. It's worth trying, Toto. Ah, uh, we go now. <coughs> Ask a few questions. And it won't come. A short time later, Toto entered the cafe. <laughs> No, we can't throw the Indians here. Ah, uh, we know that. We hear Marshall and Posse loose trailer rustlers at river. Then ride along in water and come out where main trail cross river bring Posse back on branch trail. You heard wrong, Indian. I was with that Posse. The rustler's trail led away from the river into the foothills. Oh. Why are you interested? Oh, it's not matter. I mean, leave now. Maybe me not here right. As Tonto went toward the door, a man who had overheard the conversation left the bar and went to a rear table. Merely Hody. I just heard something. What's on your mind, Wes? What'd you hear? That Indian who just went out. Said he heard the marshal and the posse left the river at the main trail and took the branch trail back to town. Well, maybe that Indian saw us heading back here. Yeah, we better tell the boats. First, we're going to follow that Indian. Come on. The three men followed Tonto up the street. They saw the Indian pass some large boulders on the trail just beyond the edge of town. Then turn off and head toward the grove of cottonwoods, which stood down in a little valley. The three men stopped behind the boulders. Hold, 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 hold. What are we stopping here for, Wes? Keep your voice down. I figure that Indian's going to meet somebody in that grove of trees. I'm going to sneak over that way and try to see what's going on. You two wait here for me. Moving from boulder to boulder, then from tree to tree, Wes made his way cautiously toward the grove. Stopping in a shallow gully, Wes peeked over the edge into the grove. Several hundred yards away, out of earshot, he saw the Indian dismount. Mm. The next moment, Wes saw a masked figure step from behind the underbrush. And at the same moment, he spotted the great white stallion silver in the background. Moving quietly but quickly, Wes turned and made his way back to his waiting friends. Did you find out anything? Why did he go into that grove, Wes? He met an hombre there. The only hombre the hawk is afraid of meeting. Remember him telling us we had to look out for a masked hombre that rode a big white horse? Holy mackerel! Did the Indian meet him? That's right, Hody. We got to warn the hawk right away that the Lone Rangers picked up our trail. Steady, boy. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Darkness had fallen, and because of what Tonto had told him, the Lone Ranger decided to face the marshal and get certain information he wanted. Oh, how oh, is it, Steady, fellow? Leaving Silver in the shadows near the marshal's house, the masked man moved from window to window until he made sure the marshal was alone in the main room. This is my chance. Going to the front door, the Lone Ranger knocked. What the... Mask, hombre. You must be with the hall. Hold Marshal. I've got the drop on you. I'm coming in. Now, see here, you... I don't like holding a gun on you, but I came for some information. That's so? Well, let me tell you something. Who owns the horse that was in front of your house this afternoon? I own it, that's who. Maybe so. But I want to know who rode that horse today. If you're interested in catching the hawk. I thunder I'm looking at one of his men right now. And if you think you'll get away with it... Wait a minute, I can explain. I'm not listening to you. The only... Oh, wait. I heard that signal. One of your gang, huh? Sorry you're so stubborn. I'll take your gun. Now see here. And empty it. All right. Here's your gun, Marshal. Have to leave now. I thunder you won't get far. I'll guarantee you that. Oh. After you go in the house, me see fella ride fast from behind house. Him go down street, turn along railroad tracks, 
The stockyard. Let's get to the horses. We hear bugle. Troopers outside town. Somehow the hawk knows we're wise to him, Tonto. With the troopers near, he and his men will have a hard time making a getaway. Easy, steady, we go. Easy, Tonto. Easy, Tonto. Easy, Tonto. Easy, Tonto. The stockyard, an engine with two cattle cars attached, stood on a siding with steam up. The engineer and fireman stood on the ground beside the engine cab, smoking. I reckon the men from the candy spread are driving in the cattle now. I can hear them coming. Yeah, it won't take long for them to get loaded. Then we can get on the way. Here comes some hombres. Must be some of the cow folks from Candy's place. Hmm, that's funny. Why aren't they with the cattle? I wonder if... Cattle, tell us, please! Hey, what's the idea? That's what shut you up! Oh. Help! Help! Get out of you! Uh, all you climb on the first cattle car, quick. And here's the boss. Him and I will run the engine. Let's get the car! Come on! Oh, boy, boy. You gotta hurry, boss. The troopers are near. That masked man is wise with the fact that whoever rode that horse must be the hawk. Now, let's get him to the cab, quick! Hey, come back! Come back! Chance shot by the reviving fireman had hit the outlaw West and caused him to fall from the engine, leaving the figure wearing the mask of a hawk to run the engine alone. The Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the place where the railroad tracks crossed the main street of town just as the train started past. He's using the cattle train to escape. The hawk to follow. Uh, the last of the two cattle cars had crossed as the Lone Ranger swung down the tracks behind it. In a moment, the racing silver edged alongside the back end of the last car. Standing in the stirrup, the Lone Ranger grabbed for the iron ladder attached to the end of the car. I made it! For a moment, the Lone Ranger clung to the iron ladder and looked back. He saw Tonto come alongside Silver and signal that he'd follow. Then he climbed to the roof of the car and started crawling forward toward the engine. Within a short time, the masked man had reached the tender and made his way over the logs toward the cab of the engine. He could see the figure at the throttle, and in the glow from the firebox, the sinister hawk-like mask on the half-turned face showed him that at last he was to meet the man known as the hawk. Drawing his gun, the Lone Ranger moved closer, but suddenly his foot turned on a slippery log and threw him sprawling into the engine cab. His gun fell from his hand as he pitched forward, and the hawk jumped toward the fallen figure with a hand on his gun. But without trying to rise, the Lone Ranger reached out and grabbed the hawk's knee. The hawk fell beside him. Without speaking, the hawk grappled with the Lone Ranger. Gradually, the two men got to their feet in the swaying engine, exchanging blows in the cramped quarters of the cab. The Lone Ranger realized it was a fight to the finish. The hawk was determined to shove the masked man from the racing train. Finish yet, a life or death battle raged for a few moments longer. Then as the hawk grabbed with a fireman's iron poker, the Lone Ranger swung with all his might. Put that down! The hawk fell backward, striking his head on the open boiler door. Then he went limp. That did it. Now put on the brake. As the train jerked to a stop, the outlaws in the first cattle car were thrown off their feet. They realized something was wrong. The only way out of the slatted car was by way of the heavy sliding door on one side. As they tried to scramble to their feet, another terrific jerk threw them down again. In the engine cab, the Lone Ranger had shot the throttle in reverse. That will do it. Once more, the train was underway at a fast speed, heading back toward the town. The outlaws in the cattle car were afraid to jump, and they couldn't get to the engine while the train was in motion. window, the Lone Ranger finally saw a large group of horsemen in the moonlight, riding along one side of the tracks toward him. When they were a few hundred yards away, he once more slammed on the brake. The engine was now at the rear of the train, so the riders came alongside the cattle cars first. The outlaws in the slatted car opened fire, and a gun battle followed. The Lone Ranger looked first from one cab window, then from the other. He realized the troopers were there with men from town. As the firing finally ceased, he knew the outlaws in the car were beaten. Suddenly, he saw Tonto ride out of the shadows of the woods just opposite the engine, leading Silver. Oh, oh Silver. Me here, train, coming back. Me waiting woods, then not see me. Good. Let's get away from here. Easy, steady, big fella. Oh, Silver. Get him out the cab. Marshal, take you, outlaw leader. It's a good thing we left right away, then. Someone might throw a bullet at me before the truth is known. All right, let's hurry. Master Silver. Get him out the cab. Got away. Let's follow him. Someone's lying in the engine cab. Might be the hawk. No, Colonel. The hawk's riding away. We'll have to get Let's him. Let's look in the cab, Marshal. All right. Well, turn this man over. 
Great day, look. Why, well, you're wearing a Hulk-like mask. I'll take the mask off. Marshal, look here. Why, that, that's Frank Carrick, head of the Cattlemen's Association. The Hulk must have put the mask on him. Hey, that's the Hulk himself. Oh, wait a minute. Frank Carrick couldn't I be I noticed the Hulk. those special fancy-made boots he's wearing as he climbed into the engine while I was lying on the ground. And what's more, the one I put back there, making him fall from the cab... Told us the hawk had been living at your house, Marshal. Uh, Holy mackerel, and Carrick must be the hawk. Sure, sure, he's been staying with me for a couple of weeks. And you know, that mask, Andre, who came to see me a while ago, tried to tell me that whoever rode the horse that was outside my horse today was hawk, and Carrick had been riding him. <laughs> well, the masked man came to ask you questions, no doubt, because our masked friend had trailed the hawk to your house. He's done the Southwest a great service, Marshal. I guess you thought that he was an outlaw instead of a friend. Was that it? Sure, but I still don't see what... I'm sure that you've heard about him at some time or another, Marshal. You see, that masked man is the Long Ranger. Oh, oh, Ranger. Oh, oh. feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker.